Good morning, family. Good morning. Happy Friday. I figure this is Friday. I start my Friday early and end my Friday early. So me and my crew, we up and off to work this morning. Uh, still black outside. We beat the roosters up this morning. We beat the roosters up this morning, baby. I hope you guys rested well. Um, you know what I want to say, people of God? We got to show appreciation to family, brothers and sisters, those we consider family. It's not always about blood, but we need to show people appreciation. Give, like the old folks say, give folk their flowers while they live, you know? And, uh... When we, what you doing, man? When we accomplish everything that we're working towards in this earth, what is there left to do if we have no love? If we have not shown love, you know, and appreciation, if we stepped on people to accomplish those things, the end of a man or woman that does such things, I can understand why their end will be full of misery. Because along the journey, they lost integrity. You know, they built no solid, honest, loyal, and reputable character. They joined whatever side had the biggest momentum or you know, whatever they were looking for, they joined forces with what was popular, what was trending, what was good for them to get where they wanted to be. And after they get there, just imagine, just think, imagine if you did everything you could do to get where you wanted to be, live how you wanted to live, and when you got it, because it's easy to get it that way too. Just gotta lose yourself. When you get there, you be in a place of misery, you know? There's no one to come around and love you. And then on the way, when you're doing it the right way, just think about it like, I was thinking about Joseph's family. Joseph's heart was in the right posture. He didn't know he was gonna have to be that provider at the end, but his heart was in the right posture. He never stepped on nobody. He went through long suffering. His fruit of the spirit was developed because he had to be prepared for all the responsibility that would be placed on his shoulders. And the people that did him wrong, they came back to him and they were sorry. And that love they withheld from him, that love that they intentionally did not show him because of their own insecurity, envy, and jealousy, they poured it out on him. They begged for his mercy, for his forgiveness. And although he had to relive those painful moments when he wept, he went into that other room and wept and cried. <laughs> he had to relive the painful moments. But he said, what you meant for harm, God did it for my good because he knew where he was at, <laughs> oh baby. That felt so much better and it was so much greater than the pain that he'd had to endure, even though it was a long suffering. But where he was at and the position he was in and being able to be that man that could supply the needs of God's people and even his own family that rejected him, being the head and no longer the tail, being above only to never be beneath again. He said, what you meant for harm, God meant it for my good. He forgave them. He supplied them with what they needed. And he said, go get daddy. He had him go get his father. And oh, what great joy. How great full of joy his father was to see that his son was still alive in the land. And now he lived 
in a community that were no longer strangers, but his very family that had a repented heart and they made their souls right with God. Think about if they never would have came back across Joseph and, and, and what great evil they had done to their brother. Think about how that would have haunted them for the rest of their lives. And you know, sometimes what I was pondering on last night, people of God, my kings and queens, my brothers and my sisters, my tribe of love, you know what your little country bunkin was pondering on last night? You know, it pains some people just to say that they sorry. We can say we sorry when we wrong. Sometimes we don't see that we wrong. I know I am. Sometimes if I don't see where I'm wrong, I'm willing to communicate. Like I want to communicate and understand why you feel like I'm wrong because I, I, I need to understand why you feel like you feel. If I don't see my error, you need to help me understand. And I need to, you need to understand where I'm coming from. We need to talk. And then if I see where I'm wrong about something, I have no problems apologizing. It don't pain me to apologize, never have. A lot of times people just don't want to communicate with you or they have to wait till they get mad with you and then they, you'll hear them bring up a, a lot of old stuff that they shouldn't even be saying and it'd be painful, it'd be hurtful and then they'd be like, well, Dad, why are you holding that in your heart for me? And really, it's they just holding on to all that unsaid stuff because they never communicated their feelings and you never knew and it's not our fault you know but you know what I pondered on last night if people would just learn to be honest and apologize some of the very people sometimes I sit I can listen to people sometimes and I can just feel where they're coming from I don't always you know I'm, I, I'm your little country bunkin is a colloquial speaking woman I still speak colloquial you know <laughs> I don't always speak in informal and formal language and stuff. I've been educated, but I speak colloquial. You know, this is me. But there's sometimes I don't always explain or express um, myself off the drop of a dime when I'm communicating with folk. But at the end of the day, I've always, I care about the feelings of others, more so than folk have ever cared about my feelings. You know, even the folk who are not attached to me, whether regardless of where I'm at in the world, I will speak up for those who can't speak for themselves sometimes. You know, I will defend the innocent. I will protect the righteous to the best of my abilities. That's always been within me. But there are some people who it's like they, it's, it pains them to apologize or to acknowledge that, you know what, you were right. I was just pondering over some situations and I was talking to God about some people and myself and I said, Lord, you know, I forgive them. I see past some people's pride. I see past some people's anger. I see past some people's even hatred towards me over the years. I forgive everybody. There's not, never in my life have I ever hated anybody. I've gotten angry with folk, mad, want to fight. But I've never, I don't know what it feels like to hate a human being. And I see where it's like, sometimes healing takes place when people are honest. When people are willing to push past sometimes their own uncomfortable feelings. To heal that child that's acting out. That you may not understand. Children are born innocent. And every child is not mature enough. And don't have a close relationship with God enough to understand why they feel the way they feel and why they're behaving the way they're behaving and what are all these forces that are fighting against them. Some children are not disciplined in the word enough and they never had mama or daddy there to nurture that soul, to guide them. The Bible says train a child a way that they should go. When they're older, they depart from those ways, they come back to them. And so you can't, we can't push everything off on children. You know, children are innocent. And I just think it starts from the top. When healing starts from the top, not from the bottom. But when the top don't want to do their work, then the bottom have no choice but to do what's best for them. If that makes sense. If you catch it, you catch it. I ain't going any more detail. But apologizing and, and recognizing where we're wrong 
that is a sign of maturity. Even if you think that you can get away from a, with a way with doing somebody wrong, you're never going to get away with it. And me, I'm a type of person where you, I lose. When you lose my respect, it's hard to get that back because I respect everybody, even if I don't disagree with you. But when I see that you have no integrity, when I see that you're willing to lie on me, lie to me, or steal from me, and it's blatantly obvious, and you have no remorse about it, especially if you're a type of person who you have a great, you built yourself up to a great name in society, you're a person who's very influential, you know, you're a person who's well to do financially, and I see you stealing from me, or you stealing from somebody else, or you lying, and you will, you will lose my respect. And the only way, to, when people lose my respect, the only way to get that back is to take accountability. Don't come to me asking questions, being manipulative. Well, what's wrong? Why you, you know what you did? And the only way to get that back is to be a straight shooter. When you come and you say, you know what? I did this right here and I did that because that lets me know you understand what you did, why you did it, and you taking an ownership, accountability for it, and you're apologizing. How can I not have no respect for that now the trust have to be rebuilt if that's that type of relationship but if there's no connection and you got my respect back you ain't got to worry about me ne never you know bringing that up again you got my respect but i forgive people that don't mean people have my respect because i see i don't respect those type of energies you know and Sometimes the pride of people can make them just keep going on and on and on and on and never acknowledge a treat, a, you know what I'm saying? And not like, for example, let's say you told somebody because you love them or you just trying to, you know, be real or help them. You say, oh, don't, um, don't, don't, what, what kind of analogy can I use? Because I don't want to be too specific. You know, a lot of things I try to talk around because I, I talk about a lot of real situations, but I don't want to be very, very specific because I know there are people watching me and it's not like I want to be so specific on on different situations, but I'm talking around it, right? But, um, but let's say I said, okay, don't go over there because if you get in that lane, if you get in that lane, you're going to get your tires bust in that lane over there but stay in lane b don't ever get in lane c because lane c it's got all kind of negative bad stuff in it it's got all kind of stuff that's going to destroy you your ride your tires and all kind of stuff don't ever get in that lane oh yeah 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 i know i know i know <laughs> right <clears throat> and let's say you try to tell somebody something for their good but they shoot you down or they or they disagree with you or whatever and they be like, I've been riding in lane C or what? Oh, yeah, I already know. I've been riding in lane C all my life. I've been doing this blah, 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 blah all my life. And ain't nothing really you too much can tell me. But you already know what you're talking about, right? You were just trying to give them some information that could protect them. They're safe. So you just kept your mouth shut once they shot you down because you can't force nobody to receive that. So you kept your mouth, keep your mouth shut. After some time press on, they're not going to tell you that they had trouble in that lane and they ran into some issues in that lane. And had they listened to what you said, they would have avoided all of that trouble that went through. They're not going to tell you their situation got worse instead of better. If they would have listened to you, it wouldn't have gotten worse. That's pride. But then when you reconnect with them after some time and you may have learned but without them telling you, right? And they might have said, um, so, so So something may happen where the whole conversation comes up again around the conversation. And uh, you might say, well, yeah, I said, um, don't be, they might, you, I said that don't go in lane C. And the pride of them will make them say, yeah, oh, I know all about that. I know all about lane C. Cause I remember one time when I went, I had this happen to me and I brushed, I, 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 I've been about to blow my tide and I saw all them things over there. And I knew not to go in lane C. I already had know that. 
but they don't know that you knew all the hell they went through in latency or they start calling out the stuff that they knew all the hell that they foresaw in latency not admitting not saying that yeah i did go through this i did experience that just like you had said if i had avoided that but they tried to act like they already knew that information and that's why they avoided it rather than acknowledging the fact that you was a mouthpiece that put them out put that warning out before they went through a lot of destruction that they had went through but they too prideful to admit it it's just something like that you know or for example it could be an, it could be something where let's say you're showing somebody something or you're telling somebody something about cars or or you're telling people okay don't do this don't get any new cars or don't do you know, don't get any new cars because of blah, blah, blah. They don't have any chips. You know, many chips are not going to be made or the parts are going to be very difficult or something like that to that nature. Let's say you're warning people about that. And there's somebody who um, may be more influential than you just watching you secretly, right? And because you're not as influential as them, they don't want to, they don't want anybody to know that they're secretly watching you and they've been monitoring you. And when you tell some tell people that, they'll go and try to find somebody else that's saying the same exact thing you're saying. And that person may be as influential as them or more influential. And then they'll go and share that and say, um, I listened to what this person right here said, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take his advice. But really, they the type of advice and, and what they're looking into, it don't even make sense for them to even look in that type of direction for that type of information had they not heard it from your mouth first. But because they're too prideful to admit that they was eyeing and monitoring and learning from your little country bunkin or some or one of you in secret, and they you put that buzz in their ear so they had to go out and find somebody else that was saying the exact same thing you were saying, and they'd rather give credit to that person and act like they wasn't even watching you even though the information that they were sharing, it don't even make sense for them to even acknowledge that type of information because it's like, what would have put your mind there anyway? You see what I'm saying? So they give themselves over. And when you're somebody who can see in the spirit, you can tell when people are being prideful with you, regardless of how influential they are, you can t or, or how, you know, who they are. You can just discern certain things when people feel like they are better than you and is showing through their behavior, through their actions that are not widely seen to everybody. This is where spiritual gifts come into play because you can see the real. And that's what goes back to, you know, having eyes to see and ears to hear. I said that over a year ago when I made that video and then it started being surfaced all over the over the social medias. Everybody starts speaking it. Oh yeah, you got eyes to see because that put a buzz in people's ears about the scriptures but nobody was saying that wasn't widely spread so now you'll click on a lot of social media videos you see people saying that a lot but it wasn't until i did that uh, teaching way back over a year ago and then a lot of people start repeating that right because it is true but you know if we just are honest and you know walk in our own truth our authenticity just show people appreciation and don't be too big and think too highly of ourselves where we can't apologize or when we can't acknowledge the strength in our brothers and sisters. That's what builds genuine and organic connections, you know, or you you see somebody and you acting like you don't see them because some of their strengths intimidate you and you just don't know how to manage. You're afraid of something. Well, what if I acknowledge it and or what if I get close to them and, and I don't know how to relate or I don't know how to, you know, acknowledge the strengths you see in your brothers and sisters. It, it builds organic connections, you know. It doesn't take nothing from us to just be humble and on any level, you know. He that is greatest among us shall be a servant. So the greater we come, become, the more we should serve right? I would never put, um, how can I say it? Like who I am, who God has called me to be. I believe that he wants me to shine my light 
me for his people. I believe that he wants me to always walk in, hit the, in, in humility in a way that I never think too highly of myself, you know, in a way that I'm not too um, so big that I can't spend time talking with people who have less than me, you know. I don't look down on people. I show everybody respect, even the homeless folk on the street. I respect them, you know. I pray for a lot of them. Some of them, they, they, they stuck in their own ways. And, you know, you got some people who are content. And then you got some people, they want better for themselves. And you got some people, they can't even help themselves. They got drug addictions, you know. They need help. They need help. And so, I don't know. We just do the best we can day by day, walking in love. We can obtain everything in the earth. But if we don't got love, we ain't got nothing. If we don't got love, baby, we ain't got nothing. I don't care what we go before God and say we've done. Say we've cast out demons. Say we've prayed for the sick. It is written that many are going to say those things. And God is going to say, get away from me. I know you not. I saw some brothers a while back <laughs> bragging on over the internet about how they cast out demons. Full of pride. Full of pride. There is no need to brag on casting out demons. That's nothing to brag about. You know? Because many who cast out demons, God is going to tell them, get away from me. I know you not. Love is the greatest thing that we can walk in. When you know that you've been through a lot of trials and tribulations, a lot of opposition, a lot of painful things in your life, and you're still walking in love, you are blessed. You have the Father on the inside of you. And the long-suffering of God's people will come to an end. Will come to an end. The question is sometimes, can you keep the faith? Can you keep the faith and keep belief? Yep. Well, that's just my little two cents. I pray y'all have a blessed day on this Friday. It's dark out here. I beat the sun up. <laughs> oh, glory. Start early, finish early, baby. You can't accomplish nothing sitting in the bed late. You get your day going. And a lot of these folk I come across when I'm working up, folk I meet, my elders, shucks. Some folk are older than me. Many of them, all of them, majority of them are older than me. Some of these men, they be out here working and they don't even have to work. You know? But they steady putting their hands to the plow because they doing a lot of things that they love doing and they always in good spirit. That's encouraging to me. You know? Been meeting a lot of different people lately that just been dropping blessings in my spirit, blessing me with their words. Words are spirit. And I'm just glad to be in the number. I'm just glad to be in the number. And I got time on my side. You know? So I thank God for that. So anyway, family. Your little country bunking sister loves you. Nobody told you that they love you today. And you already know you are loved. Yeah? There's only one of you in the whole wide world. Make your mark. Show up your authentic self in this life. Be who God has called you to be. And know that we serve a God that said he'll never leave us, nor forsake us. And because you sat here and watched me and listened to me talk, then know that I am a living witness. Because it is only by the strength, the grace, the power, the love, and protection of God, our Father, that I am before you on this here camera. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. If it hadn't been for his grace and mercy, it's because of God. Paul said, oh, what a wretched man I am. A 
don't deserve to be who I am, but it's God. It's the grace of God. So I say, oh, what a wretched woman I am. <laughs> it is only by the grace of God that I am who I am. And I thank him for it every day. Yep. If it had not been for the love on my side, tell me where would I be? We know that the blood of Jesus is the only blood that has power. It'll never lose its power. Go and run your race, my family. Run your race. Keep God with you. Stay on the thin and narrow path, and it'll always be well for you while we're in this land. You have a right to live out your life. Have a blessed day.